Hi, Dave here. This is video four. It's our fourth and final video covering chapter nine of Absolute Java on Exceptions. In the plan here, we're going to talk about checked and unchecked exceptions, talk about nesting try catch blocks within a try block or within a catch block. We'll look at the keyword finally, and then finally, <laughs> and then we'll look at how to use exceptions in a while loop. Now, checked and unchecked exceptions. Exceptions that are subject to the catch or declare rule are called checked exceptions. The compiler checks to see if they are accounted for with either a catch block or a throws clause. Now, the descendants of the class exception, all the descendants except those that are runtime exception descendants are checked exceptions. All other exceptions are unchecked exceptions. So runtime exception and all of its descendants are unchecked exceptions. Also the error class and all of its descendants are unchecked exceptions. Now try catch blocks are used with both checked and unchecked exceptions but they're only mandated for checked exceptions. So what are the exceptions to the catch or declare rule? Checked exceptions must follow the catch or declare rule. Programs in which these exceptions can be thrown will not compile. Eclipse will not compile them until they are handled properly. But unchecked exceptions are exempt from the catch or declare rule. Programs in which these exceptions are thrown simply need to be corrected as they result from some sort of error. Now, now keep in mind that try-catch blocks can and often should be used for both checked, or have to be used for checked, but they should also be used for unchecked exceptions, only they're not mandated. So here's our class exception again in the Java Lane package. And one of its children is that runtime exception class that we talked about. So runtime exception in all of its descendants, I'm showing them here, a lot of them here. Some of these children have their own children. But everybody that's a descendant of runtime exception is an unchecked exception. And we see some of our favorites here. Null pointer exception. Index out of bounds exception. Illegal argument exception. Class cast exception. Now if we look at, say, the integer class, and we look at parse int, we typically use this method to take a string and turn it into an integer. We see that it throws a number format exception. Well, one question always is, is this number format exception, is that a checked or an unchecked exception? Well, it's easy to click on number format exception and look back at its hierarchy and see that it is a child of runtime exception. Or should I say it's a descendant of runtime exception. Because it's a descendant, it does not have to be checked. So in blue here, Everybody that's a child of exception, with the exception of runtime exception and its descendants, they are checked exceptions. What's shown in yellow here are unchecked exceptions. Well, when should you use exceptions? Exceptions should be reserved for situations where a method encounters an unusual or unexpected case that cannot be handled easily in some other way. Now, when exception handling must be used, here are some basic guidelines. Include throw statements. Enlist the exception classes in a throws clause within a method definition. Okay, the declare rule. Now place the try and catch blocks in a different method. And finally, there's a new tag we have to use. Place Javadoc describing throws so the user knows what to expect and react to. This is the only way the developer will know what 
what kind of exceptions they can prepare for and to call your code. Nested try catch blocks. It is possible to place a try block and its following catch blocks inside a larger try block or inside a larger catch block. If a set of try catch blocks are placed inside a larger try block and an exception is thrown in the inner try block that is not caught, then the exception is thrown to the outer try block for processing. And it may be caught in one of its catch blocks. Now, for readability and maintainability, instead of having this inner try catch block, you could put that into a helper method and then just call the helper method. The finally block. The finally block contains code to be executed whether or not, that's key, whether or not an exception is thrown in a try block. The finally block will always be called. If it is used, a finally block is placed after a try block and it's following catch blocks. So here's try, here's our catches, then here is our finally block. If the try catch finally blocks are inside a method definition, there are three possibilities when the code is run. First, the try block runs to the end. No exception is thrown. The happy path was executed. And then the finally block is executed, right? It's guaranteed to be executed. Two, let's say an exception is thrown in the try block, caught in one of the catch blocks, and then the finally block is executed. Three, an exception is thrown in the try block, but there's no matching catch block. The finally block is still guaranteed to be executed. And then the method invocation ends and the exception object is thrown to the enclosing method. The bottom line is finally is always executed. So here's a class final demo simple main method it's going to call exercise method with a value of 42 and note that our main the calling of the exercise method is in a try catch block well we call exercise method and it declares that it is going to throw exception it also has a try block and if n is greater than zero we're 42 it says throw a new exception so we're going to immediately leave the try block but there's no catch block that matches exception so before we can leave and go back up to the main method we're going to execute the finally block once we execute the finally block the exception will be thrown it'll be caught by main and we'll print out caught in main so I'm showing the output here if we ran that program, and you should walk yourself through it. Now, how about exception handling with the scanner class? A lot of times we want to prompt the user. If they give us bad data, we'd like to re-prompt them again. The next int method of the scanner class can be used to read int values from the keyboard. And like I said, if the user enters something other than an int, it's going to throw an exception. And the exception thrown in this case is an input mismatch exception. So here for scanner, I'm showing the next int method. And as we look at that, we'll see, we see that it can throw an input mismatch exception. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a loop. And we're going to stay in this while loop until we're done and inside the while loop I've got a try catch block the try block is going to call the code that we're going to ask the user for some input and if we get a valid input we'll set done to true and we'll leave the while loop but if an invalid input comes in the code that may throw an exception throws one we'll catch it prompt the user again come around and try to get a better value so here's the code. We have a scanner. We set our Boolean flag to false. As long as we're false, we have this try catch block. Ask the user for a whole number. 
try to get it. If next in throws the input mismatch exception, we'll eat the rest of the line, notify them that we got a bad value, come around and we'll try again. And we'll try this as long as we have to until we get a valid value. And so let's say we prompt the user, enter a number, and they typed in 42. It'll go into the catch block. We'll tell them it was a bad number. We'll have them enter another one. Here we put 42 in without a space. We'll try anything. Again, we go into the catch block, prompt it again, valid number entered, we leave the while loop. We can also do the same thing with the J option pane. And here I'm showing you a go method that's using the same while loop, but now it's prompting using J option pane to get a valid integer. That concludes video four. Have a nice day.